Hi everybody. So I've got myself an airbrush. Now I know nothing about airbrushes and the idea of doing this video is to talk from, from the point of view of a, a painter who uses normal spray guns who's just got an airbrush so that if you're in the same position as me you were trying to do what you're trying to do and that's I've got some stencils and I was just trying to do some stencil work I'm not no artist but I was just thinking that if I could get the paint on finer I might be able to do something that might be might be better than what I'm currently trying what I'm currently getting out of a 0.5 and 0.6 um, a and I R150 and a SRI Pro Lite um, so I thought I'd get myself an airbrush now this isn't unboxing as such because I have already unboxed this and, and tried it once I haven't used it properly once but I've tried it once and it is definitely different to a spray gun definitely different to a spray gun so let's see what we've got we've got the Harder and Steinbeck Infinity CR Plus and the CR Plus as far as I know stands for Chrome so it's a chrome body uh, and some of the internals are chrome as well and they also have now have PTFE seals which amazingly they didn't have apparently when they first came out they didn't have so that's what you get you get obviously your airbrush a couple of accessories which will run, run over in a minute well not literally run over <laughs> not in a car but run it run run over in a minute if that makes sense um a small pot and a, and a larger pot I, i'm not sure of the size but I, would, I think that's something like something like three or four milliliters and something like seven or eight milliliters so we're not talking big uh, now this this particular kit you can get them uh with or without a spare needle this particular one comes with a, a 0.4 millimeter needle and a 0. 0.15 installed so but you can get them in in just 0 0.15 0 0.20 0 0.40 uh, and i think 0 0.5 or 0 0.6 but anyway that's what i've got a 1.5 sorry 0 0.15 and a 0 0.4 and a 0 0.4 is only just off what the like the ao and ir 150 i've got which i've got in in 0 0.5 but they do they quite different beasts and what i was going to do is do this video in two parts one's effectively like a bit of an unboxing and talking as somebody who doesn't normally use airbrushes and just saying what he feels about it and then i'll do a couple of uh, tries with the with the sri and the ani with the smallest tips and just seeing what the difference between an airbrush and a small a spray gun is so that if you're in the same position as I was and debating about an airbrush for about three or four months uh, you can make the decision much quicker if, if that's what uh, that's what floats your boat really so what we got with this we just got a basic airbrush now there's plenty of videos online on um, YouTube about this so you know this isn't going to be a, a be all and end all but it's just as i say from a painter's point of view a spray painter's point of view looking at his first airbrush now it's not recommended as a first airbrush really i think because it's supposed to be a bit too technical um i think i think that's what people say anyway but you know i thought well i, I wanted a, a good one if i didn't want to buy one and then a slightly better and then buy a good one in the end i thought i might as well go for one straight off the bat so that's what we got so i'll just whip it apart and if you've looked at the various videos on these airbrushes right over there, um, when I was looking at them, I thought, well, that looks complicated compared to a normal spray gun, but they are actually not that complicated. So this is just, this is an adapter you get for a quick release. You get a small quick release, and they're all uh, eighth inch fittings. Um, so that's the adapter for the quick release. And then in next thing in the bottom you've got here, you've got the actual air valve. Now that air valve there, that air valve there, the little brass bit there, is pushed down by this. So when you push this down, it releases air, and when you pull it back, it slides the needle back, which releases fluid. So that, that's how the pair of them work. Um, so it's not like a, a, an air gun where you sort of do... Well, they do actually have two separate... Uh, 
you know when you first pull the trigger on you get air and when you pull it in a bit more you get fluid so i suppose that is the same but they're not they don't sort of work independently like this like this does so that's that's all that does is that the little valve is pushed down by this lever here so you have to be really careful of the tips of these uh, I'll, I'll come to that bit in a minute so that's your pot so the, the pots just screw on and they've got a um, literally just a push on lid you can take this back off here there's two bits to this this is an, an anodized piece which it's got um, at the back here it's got a, a like a, a little quick release which sets the fluid needle when the fluid needle comes back he says concentrate so when the you, you see you push it like that and you can hear it click like that and what it does is it effectively pushes against when you turn this in it pushes against just here just at the back here and what that does is it, it as you slide this back it becomes a stop so this need this needle here which is sliding this is grabbing the needle and sliding it back. It won't allow it to go any further. So it's just a stop, just a way of, of stopping so much material coming out. And it will allow you to get lines the same each time if that's what you want. So that's a good thing about this airbrush, apparently. As I say, I'm only going by what I've, what I've heard. That's a good thing about this airbrush that other airbrushes don't have. You get that, the facility to, uh, to lock it in position. Now, you have to be careful with these components because they're quite... Compared to a normal spray gun, they are obviously quite delicate and quite small. Now, you loosen off that, that's like a chuck. Take that off, and if you can see, you can see here, just here, you can see there's, there's grooves cut out. So there's literally a, a line being taken out of there and one there. So it becomes like a little chuck. So this thing here just goes around there and grabs the needle so that that's what that is so once you remove that or loosen that you should be able to pull the needle out uh, and you're supposed to i'm not quite sure why but you're supposed to push the this lever down when you pull the needle out so we pull the needle out keep it straight as well because you don't want to bend it especially that one because it's the, the uh, 0 0.15 so then you've got now this is a this is called a limiter for the um for the, the the lever but it doesn't seem to limit anything it just goes in there and stays in there but maybe i'm just not doing it right but that's what it seems to be and then effectively you've got a chuck so that's your chuck that the that the needle goes through it goes through this side the other end as i said fit, fits on here and by tightening up it grabs hold of the needle so that moves the needle across so that's that there's a small tool in here there's a few bits in here but there's a small tool here which is for oh, the tree the, the uh, lever's just fallen out there because once you take once you take this out that part there fits inside there and that holds it in so once you remove that then this will fall out which is fine it's supposed to do that and then there's a, a small tool here which goes in here and turns that to open it so it's effectively like a little like a little spanner but what i found is when you've undone this once as long as you don't do it up silly tight you can do it by hand anyway so you probably won't need that and then you come to the front now the front you take that off and that's your little spray cover which stops you touching the needle because the needle is literally literally comes out the end here and obviously it's really fine so you've got to be careful of that so that's that bit there and then you've got at the front you've got the little tip and that's the cover for the tip and then inside you have the tip itself which is there that little bit there and that's again a little neo neoprene seal. Uh, I think that's about it with this. I don't think that front of the body is a, is a groove there, but I don't think the front of that body comes off. But if you know differently, then by all means, get in touch and let me know. 
is uh you can't, i don't think you can see it but there's a reception down there for a screwdriver so i'm guessing you you can actually take that further apart but you wouldn't need to do it for cleaning so just a couple of accessories that are with it in that little bag you've got a little little spanner or pin whatever you want to call it uh for undoing that which i was talking about you've also got inside you've got a small a small cover like that and what that is designed to do that is designed to go over where is the so that's that's the front where the needle is inside like that on top of there so that's on there and that's designed so that you can go flat to the work like that and then move around and it keeps the because the distance is the same uh, if you've set your fluid the same on the on the back here, it enables you to get a, a line the same all the way, all, all along basically. As long as you've got paint in there, it'll it'll be the same, which is quite a good idea. Uh, this little one here, I'm not sure what that's for. Well, I know where it goes. It goes over the front here again, but I'm not quite sure. It looks like a more of a conventional twin horn, like a. Uh, a normal spray spray gun but it, it's, it hasn't got air holes in either either of those horns so you know I'm, I'm not sure what it does but it's obviously some kind of uh other shroud or tip for it my well, tip's probably the wrong word shroud so what i'm going to do now is i'll put this together i'll make an, another part of the video which obviously will all go together anyway and we're going to see what uh what a uh, a small airbrush can do compared to a small or small tipped airbrush compared to a small tipped spray gun just to see whether you're in the same boat of me, as me whether you think you want one or, or not and we'll see what the differences are all right then i'll see you soon in the next part 